Hi folks, it's Colin. Well, today it's day... Ooh, well, it is technically day seven of Project Alice, but in reality it's only day five because of um, last Sunday, and we're not really including um, the wedding the other night that we got to, or, well, that's a funny story, but I'll tell you about that in a minute. Um, so what has happened today? Well, I have actually done nothing today. Mark has done the work today. Um, for those of you that don't know, I am studying uh, to become a psychotherapist. Um, on, uh, basically, it's just slightly less than the degree standard qualification. And I had quite a lot of coursework that I've been trying to get sorted out for the last few weeks. So it kind of came to a head. Um, I had all my fundamentals done. I had all my research done. I had everything all written. And I started looking at it and I realized that I had made significant structural mistakes because I had done my coursework over the period of the year trying to preempt it. And as I had done this coursework, um, I'd obviously develop my own skills and abilities as a hypnotherapist and as a student hypnotherapist I have to add that um, more so because of that I had continuously kept rewriting and rewriting and rewriting what I was doing until I got to the point that I didn't feel that anything that I had submitted for my you know big thesis big end of year piece was anywhere right so I just rewrote it again, and it was a cramming session to say the least. So apologies to everyone for the last, I would probably say people in my personal life, especially for the last two, three weeks, I've been very tense, I've been very angry, I've been very frustrated about the whole thing. Um, it's hard not to let these things come out. And I know that I say that as someone who's not the offer emotional advice and personal advice and things like that to people um, we all have our limitations and I know I certainly was approaching mine but um, my coursework is submitted big thing for me um, I still have a little bit more to catch up with but in the meantime what we do have today is we have a little update from Mark um, this update Mark did this this morning. Um, there are updates even since he's done this video. Uh, he got a load done today. He worked on, um, this is Saturday on his own today, because he knew that I had the, I just, I had been managing, I'd been, you know, setting myself several hours every night to get this stuff done, but I just wasn't doing it. Just, it just wasn't gelling. Um, so Mark decided then today that he would take a few things on and um, get the car sorted. So I'm going to hand the video over to Mark here. Um, and he's going to give you today's updates. And then I'm going to give you another update at the end of the video that Mark has done. And to tell you some exciting news. And uh, yeah, so enjoy Mark's presentation. And... Uh, I'll catch you in five minutes or so. Hello everybody, uh, welcome to another wee video. Um, Colin, I'm not too sure if Colin's going to be down today, so he uh, asked me to do a wee video. Uh, today is Saturday, uh, day five. Uh, we didn't, I uh, don't think he did a video yesterday, but uh, we were pretty tired yesterday from uh, coming back from down Patrick and we didn't get started till late, so... Um, but yeah, just uh, I thought uh, I'll show you a wee bit of an update before uh, before Colin maybe isn't back down till Monday. But uh, I got all well yesterday. Um, we got the the thermostat pipe uh, overnighted. Um, big thanks to Scott for sorting that out. Uh, I know he was under pressure on the Thursday, so to get that out for us on Friday was great. So. I was able to finish off the engine yesterday. Everything's back on. Um, 
uh, new coil packs, new HD leads, and everything auxiliary wise is all new as well. Uh, new idlers, tensioner, and belt, obviously. Um, uh, I came across uh, a few, I wasn't too happy about the exhaust manifold stuff, so um, I ended up taking them off as well, and I've ordered two gaskets for them. Also, the studs were all bad, so um, I think Colin actually started yesterday, so we'll give it all a good clean up and uh, put new studs and, and nuts on. So, um, I can see he's only got one in, so um, I'll probably finish that off today. Uh, other than that, we got the front subframe together. Um, again, a uh, few issues with fitting the 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 poly bushes to the rear arms and um, uh, again uh, parts is always a problem and these uh these arms weren't just quite right but uh, we end up getting them fitted we have the anti roll bar poly bushes as well so that's all ready to go I'm going to give it a wee coat of um, cavity wax inside before it gets fitted but other than that it's all ready to go all new bolts should be a good job. Pretty much the same setup I have in my car. Um, so yeah. Other than that, today um, I'm planning to have two uh, two brake pipes to fit to the front and make up two new lines, and then hopefully get the engine back in. Uh, and uh, that should be good to go. Hopefully, um, have this. Uh, clutch to fix but uh, that shouldn't be too bad but yeah hope the engine will be in today and hoping to get a coat of wax oil on the back and then that'll be ready for the tank to go in um, Colin will probably cover this himself but uh, we came across a fuel tank yesterday uh, the car uh, before it came came in uh, was having a few issues on startup um, weren't 100% sure why but uh, I wanted to change the fuel filter because it's a good thing to do so the only issue is Colin has an early tank so this is like a, a pre-02 tank and uh, it has the old style metal filter which apparently you can't buy and um, I've looked everywhere and Colin think looked everywhere so I think the plan is now we're going to fit a post O2 uh, tank which means you have the paper element filter and we'll do all that I think according to people I talked to last night and from looking online everything's the same connection wise so uh, I think we'll do that I think I've already got one source as well so we'll do that before everything goes back in and then it should be just assembly uh, I think we've Got over all the tough bits with a couple of obviously trailing arm stuff to put back together, but that'll probably be done on the car. And the bushes and stuff need to be put in, and new brackets, and everything, bolts, all new bolts. So, yeah, getting on well. Um, like I say, I'm hoping I'm hoping to get that these few jobs done today, and then, uh, not too sure what if Colin's gonna be coming back Monday, but, um, yeah. Monday, hopefully I get a fuel tank and stuff, we'll get the, then I can build the rear end up, so. Hope, uh, hope that gives you a bit of update, Colin will probably tell you a bit more, but, uh, that's, that's from me anyway. See you later. Well, that was our handsome Mr. Mark Sterling there. Um, good man, flat out working away as usual, and some of us are studying. I'd called down to see him earlier on today at uh, lunchtime just for 10 minutes to see how he was going and um at this stage at lunchtime he had this that's right he had the engine in um he had the uh, brake lines fabricated and uh, a few other bits and pieces tweaked and fitted as well and um, i wasn't sure if he'd started the wax oil yet or not i think he was just about to do that so yeah, the car is really coming together. Um, I have to admit I'm quite sad that I wasn't there for the engine getting put back in. I know that sounds like a really stupid thing, 
but it would have meant a lot to me. But a time frame's a time frame. We've got to be realistic about this. Um, so that's, as far as I'm concerned, that's brilliant news. Um, we're both taking Sunday off. I have university class on Sunday. Well, I call it, I, I call my course university. Let's just call it university for sake argument. I have a university on um, Sunday. And I'm sure he wants to sit and watch the Formula One as well. So fair play to him. I think he's earned a wee day off this week. But um, to give everyone the comedy value, I'll tell you all about this wedding that we were going to. Um, uh, myself, my other half, and Mark and his other half, we were all going to the wedding, as we mentioned earlier in the week. And um, anyway, I was in a place called Downpatrick here in Northern Ireland. Quite a, you know, it's a medium-sized town, you know, there's, there's good population density, etc. So anyway, we... We're not staying in the hotel that the wedding was at. We were staying at a hotel two miles away. Now, hear me when I say this. Two miles away, okay? Um, and the place we stayed in um, was really... The food was great. The bar was great. The crack was great. You know, there's nothing to complain about for the price we paid. Um, but when we got there, we tried to reserve a taxi. Um, for eight o'clock and we were unable to do so we couldn't understand this so we said we'll have our dinner and we'll try again now bear in mind this was a thursday night tried again no taxi companies in the area so we started phoning every taxi company within 25 miles of this place and there was no taxis operating in downpatrick on thursday night um so unfortunately we didn't get to the wedding we all had our nice clothes on i had had a wash um i didn't smell of engine oil and things like that big thing for me um so unfortunately we just went to the bar and sat and had a few um drinks and chats and yarns in the bar instead that night which was you know it was good in some ways as well because i get on very well with mark and me and mark have some good crack as I say, and his message gets on with my message, so that all works out very nicely. But yeah, um, some of you maybe have seen the video of me on Instagram munching the cheeseburger at midnight in Downpatrick. Um, as we'd walk down to the McDonald's, which was a couple of hundred yards from our house. Now, we had contemplated walking the two miles to the hotel. Um, but based on the advice on locals, that it was absolutely a terrible, terrible idea. Um, the road had no street lights, it had no road signs, it had no footpaths, etc., etc., linking the two of them. And it would just have been a very, very dangerous situation. Um, one of the barmen said to me he had a relative that was knocked over on the road quite recently. So we all decided it's not worth it. It's not worth it. Um, unfortunately, we'd all had a couple of drinks over our dinner or else one of us could have driven um, I decided to have a couple of drinks even with my medication and um, or else I was going to drive so I just best laid plans and all that so um, Andrea and Richard if you're watching this we're sorry we didn't get to it but we did send you a nice little video message and um, when we do catch up with you there'll be a card so there you go only in Northern Ireland can you plan to go to a wedding, uh, arrive at a hotel in one of the larger town areas, um, be unable to get a taxi anywhere? No, like no taxi company would come to us. We must have, four of us were all ringing taxi companies. We had the hotel ringing taxi companies. We had the bar staff ringing taxi companies, even ones who knew were taxi men. None of them would work. And at uh, evening after we had something eaten, we were walking down to the McDonald's, we came to realise there was nothing in the town. There was no movement. We saw two vehicles. One was a police car and one was a delivery van for pizzas. And that was it. Place was dead. So I can understand why the taxi drivers are not out and about. So yeah, it's just a bit of an odd one. Um, but nonetheless, it's a funny wee story to tell and there's, 
as usual, there's always bloody something whenever it comes to us. So yeah, so that's why we didn't have our taxi night, our uh, big wedding night out. But I do have some good news, and this is something you guys know that I've been working towards for a very, very long time. That's right. I now have a GoPro, and uh, that's that's something that I have been really, really. You know, you guys know I've been selling the air fresheners and stuff like that to try and make some money up for this for that very reason. Um, and um, it's just it's just brilliant. So I said to myself, I wasn't going to touch it until my coursework was completed. So I'm going to spend the evening having a wee play around with it. The GoPro, that is. Don't be filthy bastards. Um, so <laughs> hopefully going forward, um, we'll have some good videos. I have a lot of in cash in car videos and bits and pieces and stuff like that that I want to do now that I can do with this. And um, I got a, a bargain set of bits and pieces second hand off eBay of uh, really, really good GoPro stuff. So, yeah, hopefully we'll be able to start doing better video documentaries that I'm not relying on my phone for everything anymore. And uh, yes, obviously I have a really good case for it as well. So this is a it's a big thing for me. This is the this is how I'm going to take this channel to the next level. And I want to thank uh, my friends and family and everyone who's been helping you know buy the little silly air fresheners and bits and pieces like that, folks. Um, I do genuinely mean that. I thank everyone who has contributed to the channel. But there is something I do want to ask you if you have time for today um i have 16 of the cancer research key rings left i would really like to see them gone um i'd like to see them sold i have actually reduced the price on ebay for them um to see them sold i will still maintain that they get the same 3.25 Per key ring to cancer research and i'm throwing in a free air freshener as well of your choice i just want the donations to go to cancer research it's my birthday on the 25th i would like to see that all done um i've already paid um a massive massive chunk of the cancer research donation um i would like to see that the remainder of it is completed from this round of ebay sales and um i just want it gone um i don't know if people know how the ebay system works for when it comes to cancer donations or can uh, charitable donations basically short version is you buy it it comes out of my account straight away it sits in my account for three weeks after the sale confirms that it was legitimately bought by someone in the united kingdom or wherever in the world. So if it was some, someone in the UK, they confirm my address for gift aid and so on, and then it gets debited off. So for me, it would be a big thing that I can turn around and say, by my birthday on the 25th of September, all the key rings are sold. So there's a free air freshener of your choice in there as well. Um, whoever buys the last key ring, I'm going to include something special in, and I'm going to do a video of that as well. Um, I will let you know who it is. Now, the last key ring will be the last key ring posted, not necessarily the last key ring bought. Okay, so bear that in mind wherever you are in the world. I'm not always necessarily going to the post office every day, so this adds a randomness to it. So the last key ring posted is going to get something special as well. So, folks, thank you very much. Um, Sunday's going to be a busy day for me with George University. Monday, me and Mark's going to be at it there um, with the engine now in and the front brake line's done. I personally would like to try and get the front end in, um, the brake tank in, and assemble the entire rear end um and the rear brake lines as well so then in case of on tuesday it's only a case of putting together the hubs 
and um, bleedingly brakes and clutch. Um, I do still have to strip out the interior to get the uh, the handbrake cables out um, and fit the mini compensator. But I have a feeling that's that's just going to be a, that's just a pain in the backside to do, unfortunately, because um, with the car being on the ramp, I can't get into the front, and also it may be easier to reconnect the engine because of course don't I have electric front seats and I can't even get flat heads down in the side to get screws out and all sorts oh never stops never stops never stops but yes um as you saw about the metal fuel filter as well we'll hopefully have that resolved and um, waiting on a confirmation about a fuel tank a heavy six fuel tank that I'm going to go and lift later on and uh, if all goes well that will be the simple solution to anyone with an early V6 fuel tank with the metal filter. Um, we'll, go, we'll document that apart especially because that could just be a very, very simple solution. Um, the car had starting issues from cold and it was always fuel. You'd have to prime the pump two or three times. The Marf was a full tank or an empty tank and it just always felt like that fuel filter. Um, I know people have said, oh, just drill a hole through it. I'm sorry, but I'm not going to do this. I've went this far. And as Mark says, we've done this. We've put too much time and effort and money into this car to half hours this. So, folks, as always, please like, comment, and subscribe. Um, you know how to reach me on social medias. You just know where to go and buy stuff in the eBay shop. Um, I have a few deals on at the minute with the air fresheners as well. And I really, really want to thank you all for sticking with the channel. Um, and I'm going to try and do something depending on how Monday goes. If Monday goes as well as I hope it goes, I'm going to book the MOT for the ZTT and see if I can get it on the road even sooner than I hoped. So we'll just see what happens. Even if I get a fail sheet, on a few bits and pieces. I'd rather get a fail sheet and then know exactly what we need because at the end of the day, the car has been off road for such a length of time, but I think it'll be pretty easy. Mechanical, the, the MOT guys will put it on the ramp and they'll just look at everything and just see it's all brand new and just go, get it out of here, big lad. Don't worry about it. So yeah, um, I'll catch you guys in the next video and we'll just see how Monday goes.